Hi guys, um, thanks a lot for listening to this uh, tutorial video on linear regression. In today's video, we're going to show you how to uh, run linear uh, regression in SPS. And for this example, uh, we'll take a database uh, on the country macroeconomic uh, indicator. Uh, we run a multilinear regression in order to show you how we can use it in order to uh, explain uh, fluctuation of GDP, uh, which stands for growth uh, domestic product uh, per capita, GDP per capita of a country. We will show you how to uh, explain GDP per capita of a country using other macroeconomic uh, Indicator like uh, gross capital formation with investment, uh, finite consumption investment, uh, finite consumption, uh, current account balance. We have uh, population growth. We have also inflation uh, and economic openness, which is a variable that uh, measures the capacity of the, of the country. Uh, to perform according to his import and export, uh, his import and export. So uh, to run a linear regression in SPSS, you just need to go in uh, analyze, analyze, and regression. When you are in regression, you go on linear, analyze regression linear. Then click on linear. So you have. Uh, this dialog box that gives you the opportunity to choose for a dependent and the independent variable. The dependent variable here is the variable that we are going to explain. The variable that we are going to explain here is a GDP per capita. GDP per capita. So we use R to pull it into this uh, dependent variable size space. So uh, to explain uh, fluctuation of uh, GDP per capita, we will use uh, variable gross uh, capital formation. We will select gross capital uh, formation uh, and put it in this. Uh, under variable is final consumption, uh, current account balance, current account balance in. Uh, we take a current account balance, the percentage of the GDP, the percentage of GDP. We have uh, population growth, uh, which can also be used to explain uh, GDP per capita. So we also have inflation, which is uh, materialized by the consumer price, and then select it and then use the arrow and put it in independent, independent variable uh, space. So uh, we have uh, uh, economic openness uh, as a variable. We also have uh, foreign direct investment, uh, but we will put uh, foreign direct investment uh, in percent in percentage of uh, of the GDP. So while we have uh, selected um, uh, selected uh, dependent and independent variable, uh, we should set some. Uh, Characteristic. Uh, so we go on statistic, for example, uh, to show uh, to choose which option we are we, we need to have. So uh, by default, SPSS uh, choose uh, the estimate of our regression and model fit. So we can also ask for confidence interval of our coefficient. We can also uh, uh, ask for uh, covariance matrix, which is a matrix that will uh, show we, uh, to us the correlation between our, our different our different variables. So we can also uh, on residual plot uh, a Durban Watson uh, statistic in order to analyze a residual. We can also uh, Choose R square changes. You can also have descriptive uh, statistic in our regression. Then you click on continuous. So uh, we choose uh, with uh, 
theme we are going to plot so uh, you can choose to uh, have a standard residual plot uh, histogram and the normal uh, probability plot the pp uh, plot which is uh, will uh, help us uh, decide whether or not uh, uh, our residual are, are normally distributed uh, which is uh, uh, normal distribution is one of the hypotheses that hide that is hidden behind uh, linear regression it also in linear regression uh, residual should be uh, normally distributed so we can also uh, plot a scatter of uh, z of uh, uh, residual so we just uh, select we can select uh, the uh, plot of uh, residual in x and y axis so we click on continue and uh, we can also save uh, on standardized uh, uh, predicted value, standardized predicted value. Uh, that is when we are, we need to make a, a advanced modeling. So we can also uh, look at um, prediction interval of mean and uh, individual or or so on or create a coefficient statistic so we will uh, just uh, let this start uh, it is for now so we click on continue so uh, another option that you can choose is the entry uh, probability and uh, removal probability which is typical so we will let the default value as set by SPSS and then after all these parameters set you just click on OK and the result will be uh, <coughs> will appear in the screen so in the first uh, in the first table we have a descriptive statistic of uh, GGP per cover so we have a mean of GGP standard deviation number of observation in which a uh, mean has been computed uh, we have gross capital formation or uh, mean and standard deviation we have a uh, mean and standard deviation for all variable in our model and our linear or uh, model so we also have a uh, correlation here correlation between different variables so we have piece of correlation between our different variables piece of correlation between, for example, GDP cover and gross uh, capital formation is uh, 0 0.049. So, which means that uh, our correlation between variable and two variables is just 4.9%. Uh, so, the correlation is most higher between GDP uh, growth and uh, final consumption and expense expenditure in percentage of GDP and the level of correlation is uh, for seven uh, percent correlation between uh, uh, GDP per capita and uh, final consumption expenditure which means that uh, and the sign of the correlation is positive which means that when uh, when a GDP per capita increase, uh, final consumption expenditure uh, do the same, so increase in the same manner and the correlation. Uh, so, uh, but uh, contrary, uh, GDP per capita is negatively correlated to uh, population growth. So, when population growth faster, uh, GDP can can, uh, population growth can lead to a uh, GDP per capita uh, decrease. So that is uh, just normal uh, relationship. So we have also inflation, which is negatively correlated uh, to uh, GDP growth. So when there is more uh, inflation in the economy, we can uh, expect to have. Uh, 
deterioration of living condition materialized by uh, the decrease of uh, GDP per carbon. So we can also make the same analysis uh, among uh, different variables. Uh, so after uh, correlation, we have a uh, variable enter and remove the equation. All variables uh, was uh, entered the equation, but uh, not uh, remove, not remove variable in our in our equation. So we have a summary of our model. We have uh, our model which have a error, uh, a error of six uh, percent, but the R square is just forty-three uh, percent, and the adjusted R square is set at thirty uh, percent only. So you can also uh, have our ANOVA uh, sum of uh, 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 ANOVA result of the regression and the residual. So we have for the regression seven uh, degree of uh, freedom and uh, for residual third degree of freedom. We have mean, uh, mean square and we have official statistic and significant in the uh, our model. So uh, here's our uh, coefficient table. The coefficient table which is uh, a table which give uh, in which size uh, uh, per cover evolve when uh, other uh, variable, explanatory variable are evolving. So we have uh, the constant which is significant here because uh, the p-value P value is uh, less than 5% if we chose a 5% level of significance. So we also have a, a growth capital formation uh, which have a coefficient which is not significant. The P value is 36%, uh, which is more uh, higher to consider that growth capital formation significantly influence uh, GDP per capita. So one of the variables that significantly influence GDP per capita is the uh, final consumption expenditure in percentage of GDP. So uh, significant is less than uh, our threshold that as I said by 5%. Uh, the coefficient, the beta coefficient, beta coefficient is uh, 69.26, which means that uh, when final consumption uh, expenditure in percentage of GDP increased by uh, one unit, so increased by 1%, one, 1%, the GDP uh, per capita increased by 69.26 dollars. Uh, because our GDP per capita was measured in dollar. So uh, their uh, current account balance uh, didn't uh, statistically influence the variation of uh, the variation of GDP per capita because uh, the p-value is uh, higher than our threshold of 5%. If uh, our threshold could have been even 10%, could have not say that the uh, current account balance significantly influenced the variation of, uh, of GDP per capita, which is our dependent variable. So another variable significant is the population growth. Population growth uh, significantly influences uh, the variation of uh, GDP per capita and the influence, the coefficient is uh, very higher, which means that uh, uh, when uh, GDP growth, uh, the population grow by 1%, uh, GDP, uh, uh, when population grow by 1%, uh, 
GDP per capita also uh, increase by uh, 5,061 units. It means that when the population growth can mean that uh, there are more uh, uh, economic uh, forces to produce in order to improve the, the, the living condition. So, uh, we can also interpret all other coefficients using this uh, statistical significant number. But here is the confidence interval of our coefficient. So, uh, for variable significant like uh, final consumption investment, the uh, level of variation of uh, uh, GDP growth, GDP the capra is 69 and the interval confidence interval is uh, at 5 percent at 95 uh, uh, percent is uh, 33 to 106 so we can also have the same deportation uh, for any explanatory variable so we can have a correlation. We also uh, already show the correlation uh, uh, coefficient coefficient of uh, correlation. Uh, most uh, at the beginning of this uh, we also have a predicted value. Uh, the mean uh, of uh, according to our model we have minimum, the maximum, the mean, uh, the predicted mean, we have a uh, standard deviation, we have a uh, standard error uh, predicted. For the graph, we have a, 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 diet, a, a histogram of uh, dependent variable GDP growth, uh, which is not here. So here we have a PP plot for the recreation standardized residual. You see that uh, our residual is most uh, closer to this uh, to, the, the, to this uh, uh, line, which means that uh, we can assume that our residual, uh, according to the PP plot, follow the normal standard. Uh, no more uh, standard, uh, normal is normally uh, distributed. So that is one of the hypotheses is hidden behind uh, linear uh, regression. We also have uh, a scatter plot of standard residual and uh, dependent variable as we have asked in our parameters. So that's it for this tutorial.